Well, the major cost in backgrounding is, is incurred in buying the feed that it takes to put these calves uh, through a gain program. And to discuss some of our feed situation from the year, I have Dr. Carl Hoppe. He's the area livestock specialist. He's stationed at the Carrington Research Extension Center. And you know, it looks like we're experiencing a big corn crop again this year, or anticipating a big one. So what can we be expecting to pay probably for our feed grain prices, particularly corn, but how that also relates to maybe barley or other feed grains? Sure, corn is a fluctuating price throughout the whole year, but this time of the year it's pretty reasonably priced compared to previous years. This uh, $3.15 corn that's out there is uh, really favorable for feeding cattle. If you uh, go on the, on the procuring sites throughout the state, in other words, the places that uh, use a lot of corn, but not for feeding cattle, but for feeding uh, uh, the distilling factories that produce ethanol, find out that the price is pretty constant. I see Castons this week is at 331 when I looked, as well as Underwood and Spiritwood. They're both at 331 for a price. Richerton is 315, so consequently transportation costs uh, affect that a little bit. And consequently, if you look those on a ton basis, You'll see that the price per ton is $1.18 up to $1.12, or down to $1.12. Our feed price costs are pretty low this year. Um, feed barley is another feed that's out there that's actually really low priced. Um, at $2.20 a bushel up at Leeds, North Dakota, that converts to about $92 a ton. Now, the only way to compare these two feeds together is to look at TDN values. And when you look at TDN values between those, you look at the cost per pound of dry matter of TDN, Corn's around $1.54 and barley's at $1.33. So if you're into feeding some barley, you might have some cheaper feed this year. Of course, there's discounts for vomitoxin. There's discounts for molds, light test weight. There can be some real deals in other feed stuffs out there this year if you're in the right location. It appears uh, wherever you're at in the state, there might be some things that might be price competitive um, and very much a local demand, but they can be great feeds for feeding cattle. Well, it sounds like our corn prices are considerably lower than they've maybe been a few years back and, and uh, anticipate that will be a primary ingredient, including in feeding rations. But the other thing our rations have for background and calves is a, a mixture of forages and some concentrates and hay, primarily our forage source and uh, hay's a more local market. Um, it looks like our bale count's pretty good across the state. What's that? translating into in regards to what would cost to buy hay or what we should price our hay at when we're doing our own ration formulations. You know, a quick thumb rule I always use is when you know what the corn price is on a ton basis, take that in half and that kind of guides where your hay prices are gonna be in the state. So I said earlier that there were um, 112, 125, so half of that's gonna be around $75 a ton. So and that's sure just a average type hay. Now, I'll so, we don't really have a market in North Dakota that's at auction. Our closest auction is in Minnesota, and if you look at the Minnesota hay auction, you'll see that uh, uh, for last month, because they don't have a September auction yet, that the relative feed value prices um, um, that are high, uh, let me say this, hay is priced on a relative feed value basis. Relative feed value would mean that 100% uh, 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 full mature bloom, 100% alfalfa hay is around 100 feed value. If it's young bud, small stem, a lot of leaves, then the relative feed value is quite high. And if you get up to around 175 relative feed value, dairies, even backgrounders could pay a lot for this because there's a lot of feed value into it, both in energy content and protein. And that relative feed value price is around $1. two for last month. On an as-is basis per ton, it's $185 a ton. That's some pretty expensive hay, even more expensive than corn. So it usually doesn't price into our backgrounding rations. Not, well, let's look at the other ones. Alfalfa hay at relative feed value of 126 to 150 is 92 cents or 126 bucks a ton. Well, okay, if it's less than 100% re relative feed value, it's around 75 uh, cents. Uh, per pound and consequently the as is dollars per ton is around 57. So you know if you look at the grass hay price, the same deal that's trading around 60, it, it, it's all relative to the corn price again. Now I take kind of a question here when it comes to availability of hay in North Dakota. Depending upon where you're at, you may not have enough hay and hay really turns into a transportation headache. There's a lot of cost in hauling hay around. You might think you can, you can do it, you can haul hay, we did it quite a few years ago, but the cost really adds up. 
Um, in our local area around Carrington, we didn't have much rain in April. We didn't have any snow in March. Our hay crop for the first cuttings were a half, were a, half a crop, if not less. But we offset that through a lot of straw that was purchased uh, that's been put up. We've offset that with uh, CRP haze. It's been offset with ditch haze. It's been offset with corn stover right now. So everything's priced accordingly. So to answer your question, haze trading somewhere between $25, $60 a bale, depending upon the weight of the bale and the feed quality of the bale. But there should be enough roughage out there to provide that feed to maintain the rumen functioning. Now we'll look for better feeds. Well, it sounds like we kind of know where we got hay. It might not be in all the right hands. It might be some trading, but it's not going to be at the drought prices the Southern boys had to pay. And it's going to be a pretty economical source of feed as well. The other thing that most of our rations include in more recent years is a byproduct such as the corn distillers uh, grains. Uh, extra source of protein, phosphorus, any challenges on the supply or the pricing of those into rations this year? Well, first let me say, that there's a slide you'll see that, that shows that we have a lot of processing plants in North Dakota for coal products. It can be distillers grains, beet pulp, uh, canola meal, barley malt sprout pellets, wheat mids, we produce a phenomenal amount of byproducts or co-products in North Dakota. Now, I didn't talk about this earlier, but corn is relatively low in protein. Some of our grass haze we have, especially the straws and corn stovers, low in protein. The beauty here is co-products are high in protein. They've milled out the starch or fermented out the starch, and what's left over is high protein feed. It's usually pretty cost competitive. I went and looked at uh, um, the prices that are going for co-products in North Dakota recently. And uh, we've got four or five uh, ethanol distilleries in North Dakota. And if you look at what they have for distillers grains, they're all priced at around $120 a ton for dry product. Now, if you want 50% moisture product out of these, out of these uh, facilities, it's around $55 a ton. Now, uh, we've got a plant in Castleton that is, produces uh, dry and wet distillers grains. Of course it's wet so it's a more moisture they price it lower at $30 a ton. Hankinson is a huge plant as well and they sell distillers grains both wet and excuse me dry and modified they're priced at 120 and then 70. Well they're closer to a feeding region in South Dakota Minnesota so the price of it goes up a little bit. If you go to Spiritwood and Underwood um, Blue Flint, uh, they're at 115 or 120 for the dry and distillers is at 55. So what I'm getting at here, even if you go out to Blue F um, Red Trail Energy in Richardson, the distillers price is still around 120. So wherever you find distillers grains in North Dakota, right now the prices are very much the same. If you want it dry, it's about the same price except you don't have to pay for the water. Obviously it's cheaper, but you're, you're hauling water. Now, that's high in protein, high in energy content. You gotta haul it though. Well, what if you got a wheat mid plant right next door? A little less in energy content, high in protein, not as quite as high. What's the price? Well, it's a little bit cheaper, 115. You go to the state mill and elevator, it might be around 110 for these spot prices that I have. And if you want a spot price list, contact your county extension agent. They might have a, a dated price list um, because spot prices always change, but there'd be phone numbers that they can call and find out what the current price is, which you can negotiate. Barley malt sprouts are available out of Spiritwood, North Dakota, and they're priced around the same too. So we've got all types of feed out there. Beet pulp's another one. Um, we just, availability is actually really good. When you talk to them, they've got it sold maybe for a month or availability is right now. If you're looking for after the first year, we have access to a lot of co-products in North Dakota right now. Sounds like we got a lot of choices. Our, our location and what we're close to and transportation and access will you know, determine what maybe works best for us. But I do know that in the last year and some this year, we've had some disease issues in our wheat crops. We've had uh, scab which is related to some vomitoxin levels, which has created marketing problems. And some of that grain is probably destined as a feed because it won't work in the milling industry. What do you, are you got concerns about using wheat in, in backgrounding rations and wheat that might have some uh, scab or vomitoxin levels in it? Well, we did some research at the Carrington Research Extension Center quite a few years ago. Uh, Dr. Vern Anderson uh, fed the highest level of barley he could find at that time. 
uh, that was contaminated with the highest level of vomitoxin in barley. And by the time you feed half of the ration as barley, the other half is grain, you dilute it somewhat. And even at that high level of dilution, uh, excuse me, even at that high level after it's diluted, we didn't see any problems in feeding calves, backgrounding, finishing. We didn't see anything in, in uh, uh, cows or replacement heifers, there is no deleterious effects. So the ruminant animal has an opportunity to utilize some of those based on the research that we've seen. Now, when you see one mold, there might be others. So you never quite know what might happen there. So a good idea is to take a sample if you're worried and send it to the NDSU Diagnostic Lab and have what's called their uh, mycotoxin screen and for $100, you can find out if it's high level of toxins, because there's aflatoxins and T2 toxins and T3. There's other aucratoxins that are actually kill the liver in an animal. So you'd hate to feed these stuff and end up with uh, dead animals because of it, or poor doing animals. We can always handle a little, but we can't handle a lot. So um, for 100 bucks, that might be cheaper than having a dead calf. That real good bargain you had may not be such of a bargain. But remember, it's the dilution is our solution. So you got some really really questionable stuff have it tested and blend it into your ration it's better than burning it <laughs> well I think we're probably uh, got a final kind of question I just wondered if uh, you know we use most of our backgrounding rations have hay maybe some silage some grains some byproducts and a lot of guys feed for you know 60 70 80 days trying to get two and a half or somewhere that average day to gain other calves can you give us one example of a ration or a couple that might use those feeds and what proportion we need to feed them to accomplish that in our growing calf? Well, I got four rations here for you to look at. Oh, thanks. Four to consider. It's uh, 600 pound steers. Of course, as they get bigger, they're gonna eat more. So you gotta adjust the poundage. But 600 pound steers, um, 2.6 pounds average daily gain. We're looking at around 15 pounds dry matter intake. That's what the rations are based off. They might eat more. So if they eat more, they're gonna gain more. But first, let's start off with a ration that would be uh, a corn grain as our grain. Seven pounds of corn grain to this calf. It's got to be mixed with uh, nine pounds of hay and a pound of a 38 per 32 percent protein supplement. That'll meet the energy needs, the protein needs, the calcium and phosphorus are balanced. And it costs about, a, according to math here, costs around $1.28 a day or about 50 cents per pound to gain. Gee, based on today's calf prices, that sounds kind of intriguing. So we do have some, I don't know, this could be kind of good here, John. Let's look at some of these other uh, feeds. We got corn grain, here's a ration that's basically corn grain, hay, and silage. Okay, corn grain at three pounds, uh, hay at six pounds, that's an alfalfa grass hay. Um, corn silage at 10 pounds. And then we don't have enough protein in that ration, so we gotta put in some wheat mids. So three pounds, six pounds, 10 pounds, and four pounds of dried, of, uh, of wheat meds and that cost is 97 cents so it's actually cheaper cost to gain at 36 cents okay we got another ration say you don't have corn you want to use barley okay barley you got some corn sides you chopped it instead and then you got a little uh, uh, distiller's grains because that's going to need just a little bit of energy and protein so you use four pounds of barley 20 pounds of uh, of corn silage and, excuse me, I didn't mean barley, I meant alfalfa hay, I'm sorry. Four pounds of alfalfa hay, 20 pounds of corn silage and four and a half pounds of distillage grains. 88 cents is, a, is the feed cost for the day at 34 cents pound a gain. So, well, one more ration. We got some cheap barley out there. We wanna mix a little bit of corn, a little bit of hay and distillers grains. We didn't put up any silage. So let's use three pounds of corn, excuse me, two pounds of corn, six pounds of barley, seven pounds of hay and one pound of distillers. It didn't take much distillers, a little extra protein. 92 cents at a 35 cent cost to gain. So we'll do some budgets here after, maybe Tim did some budgets and if he did, we can find out just, this is pretty cheap feeding this year it looks like. With the performance you're getting out of those calves with those feeds and those values in the marketplace right now, generating these cost of gains, feed cost of gains I should say, yeah. in the 30 cents. I think we look at the prices of the calves going in and the potential for what those calves could be worth coming out. And I think Tim's budgets that he talked about earlier have shown some margin in this business make a lot of sense. So uh, thank you, Carl, for kind of run, giving us the rundown on what the feed is and how we put these feeds together to make our calves perform. Thank you.